Did y'all did y'all enjoy last week? We kind of looked at Jonah in a different different way, right? And as I've been going through this study, man, it's been really exciting because you know a lot of times when we grow up, we go through Sunday school and we learn all about Jonah and stuff. But you know, there's a lot you can learn. You know, the more often you get in to the Bible, the more often you look at some of these stories and, and you rehash them and you relook at them. And there's a lot of different things that the Holy Spirit will enlighten you and you can take from them. And so it's just been really exciting. Um, there's, a, there's a hymn that we sing in church sometimes and it's called, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Everybody should know that one, right? Well, one of the stanzas in the hymn, it says this. It says, Jesus saw me when a stranger... Wandering from the fold of God, he who rescued me from danger interposed his precious blood. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. O to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. You know, and so as I read those words, and I think about how quickly... We're prone to wander. And I think, how far can we go? How far can we go? And I think, how easy is it to deceive ourselves and others uh, when we've stepped out of the will of God? Uh, these searing words speak to the inner battle that we feel from time to time. A battle we sometimes win and sometimes lose. Sometimes we walk in God's will, and other times we don't. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Anytime that we walk out of the will of God, we sin. Have you ever heard anyone complain, man, God is too loving. God, God is too kind. God is too forgiving. God shows too much mercy. No, I've never heard that. I've never heard anyone say that. But that's what Jonah thought. God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh and to preach to them. Uh, Jonah wanted Nineveh punished. But Jonah knew that, that if he went and he preached to them, that God might just let them off the hook. God might forgive Nineveh. So Jonah, he, he, he ran away. He ran as fast as he could. He booked the passage on a ship headed to Tarshish. He didn't miss the boat. He got on board. Jonah was confident that he could outrun God. And so uh, he went down in the hole and he took a nap. But the fact is that no one can outrun God. So what does God do? Well, let's begin reading. If you have your Bibles, turn over to Jonah chapter 1. And we'll begin reading verse 4. And here's what it says. It'll be up here on the screens as well. It says, The Lord hurled the great wind on the sea, and there was a great storm on the sea, so that the ship was about to break up. Then the sailors became afraid, and every man cried to his God. And they threw the cargo which was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship, laying down and falling sound asleep. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to look at this morning, and if you have your worship guide inside, it should be a little handout if you'd like to take notes, and there's a little fill in the blanks. The first thing we're going to look at this morning is, number one, Jonah needs to pay attention. Jonah needs to pay attention. You put that up there. It must have been a, a really bad storm because these men who were professional sailors <coughs> had seen it all. They were afraid. They had seen everything. Uh, they'd been on the sea for so long. They were professionals. So they have seen probably some of the worst storms. But they, they were afraid. They had never seen anything quite like this storm. They, they were hardened sailors in the end, and they were used to the dangers of the life at sea. But this storm 
was worse than anything they had encountered before. Uh, notice that they did two things to try to save their lives. And we'll put it up here on the screen. A and B. They prayed. A and B. They threw the cargo overboard. They prayed. And they threw the cargo overboard. Now we all know. That life can change in a moment. Right? There can be storms. There can be troubles. There can be sicknesses. There can be death. There can be financial collapse. Problems can happen at any moment, right? At any moment. But the best thing we can do is start with prayer and then take action to help the situation. But did the storm get Jonah's attention? No. Jonah was fast asleep. Now, before I move on, let me point out a fact. Others suffer because of our sin. Others suffer because of our sin. We think that when we sin, that we're only hurting ourselves. <coughs> Listen, y'all, that's not true. Look at the story. Everyone on board the ship, they were in danger because of Jonah's sin. We're all in the same boat. A Jonah was the sinner in the situation, and yet his foolish rebellion endangered everybody around him. Please, please, please ponder these four words. We never sin alone. We never sin alone. We may be alone when we sin, but we never sin alone. Our sin, our compromise, and our deceit always injures those around us. Our spouse, our children, our loved ones, our families, and our friends. Every step that we take out of the will of God hurts those around us. Jonah is sleeping, but number two, Jonah needs to be woke up. As the ship is tossed by the waves, as the ship groans and, and creaks under the power of the storm, as the sailors are they're throwing cargo overboard, trying to lighten the load, where is Jonah? He's in the hold of the ship, fast asleep. You might think he'd be on deck, you know, helping the sailors, you know, oh man, let's get some of this stuff out of here, man, what's going on? But no, he's in the hold of the ship, fast asleep. Not a chance would he be out there helping those sailors. He's down below taking a nap. Verse 6, let's look at verse 6. It tells us, So the captain approached him and said, How is it that you're sleeping? Get up. Call on your God. Perhaps your God will be concerned about us so that we will not perish. How could Jonah sleep during a terrible storm like this? How could Jonah not realize that his life and the lives of all those around him are in great danger? How could he sleep at a time like this? Well, the answer is, is simple. Jonah thinks that he outran God. He thinks that he has gotten away with it. If you're off the hook, why worry? Why fret? Why be concerned about God? When it, when you uh, run away from Him and He can't find you, why worry? You, you, you can sleep as sound as a baby. But if the storm won't wake Him up, the captain surely will. Look at verse 7. It says, uh, the captain yells at Jonah, How can you sleep at a time like this? Get up. Look what happens next. At this point, uh, the captain, who is, he's no doubt a pagan, has more spiritual insight than Jonah does. Uh, seeing the danger that the captain uh, wants Jonah to wake up and to start praying. Pray, Jonah, pray. Uh, maybe your God can save us. Do you see what's happening? Everyone else is praying, but it's doing no good. All the sailors, they were praying to their gods. 
And, and I'm sure the captain had even been praying to his God, but it wasn't enough. Nothing was happening. They needed someone to pray to a God who could save them. Does Jonah pray? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us uh, whether or not he prayed, but he probably didn't. He was still running from God. <clears throat> so, so the sailors, uh, they take the matter uh, to the next step. And that is that, number three, Jonah needs to be found out. <laughs> Somebody got found out. <laughs> it's all right. It's her birthday. <laughs> her phone's ringing off the hook. That's all right. All right. So number three, Jonah needs to be found out. Each man said to his mate, and this is in verse 8, Come, let us cast lots so we may learn on whose account this calamity has struck us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us now, on whose account... Has this calamity struck us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men became extremely frightened, and they said to him, How could you do this? Uh, for the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he told them. <coughs> Jonah is found out now by the casting of lots. and uh, That may seem strange to us when we hear about you know, casting of lots. But look at what Proverbs 16.33 says. It says, the lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. God's Word translation says it this way, The dice are thrown, but the Lord determines every outcome. So we might paraphrase uh, Proverbs 16.33 this way, Life is like a roll of the dice, but God is in charge of how the numbers come up. And casting lots, they involve you know, using uh, different colored balls or, or rocks, uh, just mixing them together and, and then seeing which one that the bag fell on first. And in that sense, casting lots is like rolling dice. To us, it appears to be like a random chance, but they believe that God has left nothing to chance. There are no accidents in life. Uh, there are no you know, random <laughs> events. There is no such thing as luck. Even seemingly meaningless things fit into God's plan. God is always in control of every situation. Uh, do you know that, that in speaking uh, about the, the order of the universe, that Albert Einstein, I have a quote here, Albert Einstein once said, God does not throw dice. Uh, what he meant by that is, is that nothing is left to chance. But in any case, Jonah is found out. Jonah confesses his true identity. He, he's already told them that, that he was running from the Lord, right? And, and so he tells them who he really is. He said to them in verse 9, I am Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Think about that. Now, isn't it amazing how God works? You know, Jonah may run and run and run and run, but he can never really change who he is. He cries out, I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord. But Jonah was a part of uh, what you call the, the covenant people. Uh, he had learned about God uh, from the time that he was an infant, okay? Uh, he had kept the traditions of, of the Jews. Uh, he prayed to God, and, and he knew God. He knew Him well. And no matter how far he ran, he could not outrun God. Uh, Jonah, if you're a Hebrew, you need to live like one. 
You need to act like one. You need to talk like one. You need to walk like one. You need to pray like one. There's a message in this for all of us, isn't there? Church family, if, if you're a believer, then, then you need to walk like one. You need to act like one. You need to talk like one. You need to be like one. And you need to pray like one. Why? Because you can't outrun God. God wants us uh, to always behave like a believer. Now look at what happens next. Uh, things are about to get worse for Jonah. And so number four, Jonah needs to be sacrificed. <laughs> Jonah needs to be sacrificed. Verse 11, so they said to him, what should we do to you that the sea may become calm for us? For the sea was becoming increasingly stormy. He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon you. Jonah knows it's his fault. He's realized that. So uh, when the sailors ask uh, what they should do uh, to make the seas grow calm again, he offers the only solution that makes sense. He says, pick me up and, and throw me out into the sea. And it will become calm. And, and I know that it's my fault that, that this great storm has come upon you. Verse 12, but when Jonah said, throw me overboard, the sailors would not do it. Instead, they did their best to row back to land. But they could not uh, row back to the land, for the sea grew even wilder than before. And so look at what verse 13 says. It says, however, the men rowed desperately to return to land, but they could not. For the sea was becoming even stormier against them. Finally, they decided to throw Jonah into the sea. And look at what verse 14 and 15 says. Then they called on the Lord and said, We earnestly pray, O Lord, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. And, and do not put innocent blood on us, for you, O oh Lord, have done as you have pleased. So they picked Jonah up, and they threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. So in order to save the ship, Jonah must be sacrificed. Listen, guys, uh, to me, that's a picture of salvation. One must be sacrificed. In order to save the ship, one must die. One must be sacrificed. We can try to save ourselves. We can try to row to shore. We can try with all of our energy, with all that we got, with those efforts. They're futile. You cannot save yourself in your own efforts. You cannot reach the shore of salvation. It will not happen. Only God can save you. Only the sacrifice of one can calm the sea. Only the sacrifice of one provides safety. He must die that we may live. So they picked Jonah up and they threw him into the sea and it stopped raging. But, but here's the truth. And listen, I don't want you to miss this. Number five, Jonah needs to be a missionary. He needs to be a missionary. Have I told you that God loves Nineveh? <coughs> if I recall, I told you that last week. But here's the truth also. God loves Tarshish too. Right? And so this was interesting as I uh, was diving in and as I was looking and as I was studying this. Look at what happens in the story. A fierce storm comes. Uh, the ship is in danger of sinking. So what do they do? They pray. They pray. But if you go back and then you look at verse 5, what does it say? Notice that the sailors pray to, it says each one pray to his own God. In verse 14, 
They changed the direction of their prayers. They now pray to the one true God. Now notice what happens in verse 16. Here's what it says. Then the men feared the Lord greatly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. They're not praying to their own gods. They're worshiping the one true God. In the Hebrew language, there, there's a number of different you know, words for God. There's El, Elohim, Yahweh, and so on. But Yahweh was the covenant name of God. And it's the name that the Jews used uh, when they spoke of the one true God who made the promise to Israel. And, and for, for the Jew, it was the, the most sacred name for God in the Old Testament. It was the name for God as He created Adam uh, from the dust of the ground. It was the name for God uh, as He scattered the nations at the Tower of Babel. It was the name for God when He struck Pharaoh down <laughs> with the plague. It was the name for God as He met Moses at Mount Sinai. Now, the sailors were no longer praying to their gods. They were now praying to the one true God. Uh, their, their spiritual condition had changed. They, they now had started praying to the one true God, Yahweh. They feared the Lord, Yahweh. Now they made sacrifices and vows to Yahweh. Their lives had been changed. Their lives had been saved. They prayed, they sacrificed, they worshipped. And suddenly, this boat was filled with enthusiastic worshippers of the one true God. <laughs> and where is this boat going? Is it going to Nineveh? No. It's, it's headed for Tarshish with a boatload of missionaries. <laughs> Can you imagine the stories that they had to tell? Uh, a story about a man who was running from God, but God won't let him go. A story about a God who is so powerful that even the, the wind and the seas obey him. Right? A story about a God who loves people and wants to see them safe. <laughs> do do y'all remember last week I mentioned the verse in chapter 2? Let me remind you of it again. Uh, Jonah 2, 9. It says, salvation is from the Lord. Salvation always comes from the Lord. Amen. Thank God that He's a God who saves. Amen. And that He will go to the ends of the earth to see people saved. Isn't that exciting? Hey, listen. Stay tuned next week because we'll conclude the Jonah's Journey series. Let's pray again.